Recycling of end-of-life polyurethane mattresses by split-phase alcoholysis and hydrolysis. Polyurethane is an important plastic material, with an annual worldwide production of around 20 megatons. Thermoset polyurethanes account for the highest market share, owing to their high resilience, durability and versatility. Rigid foams comprise around 42% of the production, with applications in construction materials, for thermal and sound insulation. Flexible foams comprise around 53%, with applications in mattresses, car seats and furniture. The remaining 5% consists of durable elastomers, with applications in dashboards, tubing, coatings and sealants. Conventional flexible polyurethane foam is synthesised with a polyether polyol and toluene disocyanate, forming a network of polyol segments linked via urethane groups. In the presence of water, isocyanates are hydrolyzed to amines, thereby releasing carbon dioxide, which forms bubbles and causes the foaming. The amines can further react with isocyanate to form urea groups. The thermoset nature of polyurethane foams does not allow for recycling by melting. As a result, just 22% is mechanically recycled, 33% incinerated, and 45% of end-of-life PU landfilled. Therefore, a range of chemolysis methods have been developed with the goal of recycling the building blocks by depolymerization of the polyurethane foams. Split-phase alcoholysis is the most promising chemolysis method, comprising the dissolution and depolymerization of shredded foam in a polyfunctional alcohol, such as diethylene glycol, in presence of a catalyst at around 200 degrees Celsius. The depolymerization occurs by alcoholysis of the carbamate and urea groups with diethylene glycol, resulting in the formation of carbamates with diethylene glycol and release of polyether polyol and amine groups. After the reaction, a spontaneous phase separation occurs with the polar diethylene glycol and aromatic compounds in the lower phase and the apolar polyether polyol in the upper phase. However, the recovered polyether polyol is also contaminated with diethylene glycol and aromatic compounds, resulting in hydroxyl values upwards of 130 mg potassium hydroxide per gram. The hydroxyl value is a measure for the amount of hydrogen active groups in a polyol. The polyether polyols employed in the synthesis of flexible polyurethane foams have low hydroxyl values of around 50 mg potassium hydroxide per gram. The recovered polyether polyol requires multiple washing steps with water to increase the purity and lower the hydroxyl values to below 100 mg potassium hydroxide per gram rendering it suitable for the synthesis of new flexible polyurethane foams. This results in the formation of wastewater contaminated with small amounts of organic compounds. Furthermore, a substantial lower phase is also formed, for which the proposed valorization to a polyether polyol for rigid foams remains inadequate. The resulting mass balance of the process is unfavorable and has not progressed beyond the pilot scale. The input of alcoholizing agent should be limited to improve the mass balances. A screening of solvents for PU foam revealed that lactams, such as pyrolidone, can rapidly dissolve and depolymerize PU foam. The hydrogen bond donor and acceptor groups of pyrolidone can break the extensive hydrogen bonds of urea groups in polyurethane. Furthermore, pyrolidone can capture the isocyanates released by thermal decomposition of the urethane and urea groups, resulting in a blocked isocyanate and thereby driving the depolymerization. The use of 2-pyrolidone as an additive allowed for a substantial lowering of the alkalizing agent input to just half of the PU foam by weight. This also allowed for the use of more polar alkalizing agents such as diglycerol. 
alcoholysis of the urethane and urea groups in diglycerol, results in the formation of carbamates with diglycerol and release of the polyether polyol and amine groups. The polyether polyol was recovered in higher purity and yield due to a better phase separation between the apolar polyether polyol and the very polar diglycerol. A single washing treatment with diglycerol allows to further lower the hydroxyl value from around 80 mg potassium hydroxide per gram to 60, recovering a polyether polyol suitable for the synthesis of new flexible polyurethane foam. However, the aromatic compounds in the lower phase need to be valorized in order to improve the economic feasibility. The lower phase is therefore subjected to a hydrolysis at 200 degrees Celsius. The hydrolysis of the amino carbamates with diglycerol results in partial conversion to toluene diamines and diglycerol. The toluene diamines can be separated by distillation and subsequently phosgenated to toluene disocyanate. This could allow the reuse of the alcoholizing agent in new alcoholysis reactions. The process has thus a comparably lower input of alcoholizing agent, limited need for purification, and valorization of both the polyether polyol and the aromatic compounds. The mass balance and economic feasibility of the split-phase alcoholysis process can be substantially improved.